I've been interested in the role of stem cells in adult tissue maintenance since I was um, an undergraduate actually in Cambridge. We had a lot of lectures about developmental biology, including lectures from Sir John Gurdon, who has since won the Nobel Prize for his work. And um, I was always curious about what happened after birth in animals. And so it was really wanting to find a model system where I could study that process of tissue maintenance that led to my interest in stem cells ultimately. The field of stem cells uh, and regenerative medicine has changed hugely during the course of my career. Uh, when I started off it was very much a, a fringe activity and uh, very small numbers of people used to meet um, to discuss stem cells and many of our colleagues did not take us seriously at all. So it's, it's very nice and pleasing that um, stem cells have become prominent. It's important that the clinical applications are um, considered prominently and of course the advent of research on embryonic and pluripotent stem cells has really boosted the field. And I think what I like most at the moment is the coming together of all those different strands of activity into uh, pretty much a unified field. Um, in my lab at the moment, our primary focus is still, as it has been for many years, on um, stem cells in mammalian epidermis. Um, but we have moved away from conventional studies to focusing on the signals that are coming from uh, the underlying connective tissue, the dermis, that are regulating the behaviour of the epidermis. And increasingly, we want to build more sophisticated models to study the human tissue. My own lab research, um, I think our main opportunity for having an effect in the clinic is by defining different kinds of fibroblasts in the skin because our evidence would suggest that some kinds of fibroblasts would be good for resolving keloid scars and other kinds of fibroblasts might be very good for uh, reconstitution of, um, for example, um, fat tissue in women who've had a mastectomy. So I'm really hoping that this, or working towards this being uh, our clinical deliver deliverable. Um, my lab has a very collaborative approach um, and there are several different uh, collaborations that have been particularly valuable for us. I find personally what's most interesting is um, working at the interface with other disciplines. So if I find a colleague who's clearly smart, engaged, but speaks a language I don't really understand, that gets my interest up. So a few years back uh, we had a wonderful collaboration with a polymer chemist uh, called Willem Huck, who is uh, now in Nijmegen. And that uh, led us to make artificial environments to look at cell behaviour. And building on that, we have very good collaborations with a number of bioengineers and engineers, again looking at the interface between cells and the environment. And then extending from that, uh, we are involved in an ambitious project, project called the Human Induced Pluripotent Stem Cell Initiative. And that is great fun because we're really trying to interface cell biology with hardcore genomics. And I suppose finally, another kind of collaboration which is very natural here at King's is with uh, the dermatologists. The dermatologists here are very research active and it's wonderful to be able to ask them questions. Is this experiment at all relevant if, you're, if you have a skin problem? Uh, so, so those kinds of uh, collaborations are really good. It's also important though um, to ensure that the people in the lab who are taking part in the collaborations um, feel ownership of the work as well uh, and can understand how it's going to benefit their own career aspirations. So we don't run collaborations where we just are part of a massive pack of people doing lots of different stuff. We, our collaborations have very specific objectives and um, by and large have been really successful.
So um, the biggest challenges for stem cells and regenerative medicine are to uh, find out what is going to work and benefit patients. Um, the aspiration to achieve benefits in the clinic is there and there is funding for early phase safety trials. Um, but we have to, um, we, we shouldn't expect that every single thing that looks good in the lab is going to work in a patient. And we have to be very conscious of the cost. Um, a particular treatment that might cost, uh, say, a million pounds, is that really realistic if we can't uh, achieve scale? So I'm worried that when clinical trials fail, which of course they will do, um, that will have a negative impact on the field. Um, and um, I'm worried that um, the people who are responsible for healthcare delivery um, have a mechanism by which they could ensure that it's affordable. In terms of uh, addressing the challenges that the field faces, uh, one thing which I think we are doing is to be talking uh, to um, have the basic scientists talk to the clinicians and talk to the commercial sector um, to uh, map out a route to the clinic at an early stage in discovery. And in terms of affordability, um, I, I think that we have done quite well in flagging the issues up to the relevant bodies within the UK and overseas. Um, and something that has been an, a surprising boost for us is the runaway success of cancer immunotherapy, which for many years was in the doldrum and will often involve a combination of gene and cell therapy. So this is good because biotech realizes that you can make money out of these treatments. It's very good for the stem cell field because we learn so much from the clinical trials that are going on there. Um, and so I would just hope that the public would um, see that there are advances uh, and uh, keep, keep faith in what we're trying to do because I genuinely believe that the future is bright, but we're looking at probably sp small steps in several areas. And of course, we all hope for the great blockbuster breakthrough, but we can't guarantee either when or where that will come or if it will come at all. Here at the Centre for Stem Cells and Regenerative Medicine at KCL, um, we have a unique opportunity to um, recruit uh, investigators who work on different types of stem cells but have a common interest in how interactions with the environment affect cell behaviour. And by bringing um, different um, types of expertise to bear in a collaborative and very positive environment, I think we can um, do some exciting work. The other thing is that we um, are very well placed being physically in one great teaching hospital and uh, affiliated through King's Health Partners to, to other hospitals, we can reach out to uh, the clinicians and um, offer uh, collaborative um, resources uh, with them and learn from them. So I suppose I see us a bit as a flower with uh, the centre as uh, the, the middle and uh, the, the different groups around um, the faculty as be, being the petals. Career prospects for scientists who enter the field of stem cells and regenerative medicine are actually pretty good. Um, it's well known and recorded in numerous venues that um, the proportion of PhD students who will finally become professors is really small, it's like 3%. But the great thing about this field is that there are huge opportunities both within the academic se sector but also much further afield. And um, certainly the um, young postdocs and students that we're training um, have no trouble at all. In fact, I, I've been joking that we should take down our website because I don't like uh, my stuff being poached. Uh, so uh, the future for young scientists is perhaps not as linear as 20 years ago, but I think it's very positive and it's going to enrich the field enormously.